Good morning, good morning, and happy, happy Sunday. Advance. Happy, happy Hearts Day to everyone. All over the world, people will be celebrating this special day in honor of our loved ones. May it be moms, dads, lovers, boyfriends, girlfriends, brothers, sisters, everyone in the world will be sending messages of love to each other on this very special day. Hearts Day, as what I call it. Love is overflowing in the lives of many people. Love is always be there when we talk about commitment to either one of those people who are so close to us. The expression of love can be done in many different ways. And on this heart's day, it can be through flowers, can be through cards, chocolates, and etc., etc. There's a lot of things. But there was a love that was expressed to all of us 2,000 years ago, and this is what we call the greatest love of all. This is what Christians are celebrating every day because of the greatest love of God to each one of us. Jesus came into this world to show us the love, the love that nothing can compare, the love that no one can even match, not only for one person, but for all the world. May I invite you to open your Bibles to the book of Romans chapter 8, verses 31 to 39. And this month's emphasis is on God's love. And today's message is on the greatest love of all. And I will work on the messages the following Sundays on that very aspect of this kind of love, the greatest love of all. Today, I want to share with you many ideas on how people express their love so that we as God's children can love like Jesus. God wants us to love more than what we ought to do so that we will be able to express the kind of love that God has for all of us. Romans 8, 31 to 39, in your Bibles, what then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave, up, gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us, give us all things? Who will bring any, cha- any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who is he that condemns? Christ Jesus who died. More than that, who was raised to life is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. Verse 37, no, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Pray with me. Gracious, loving, heavenly Father, we honor and glorify your name today as we talk about the greatest love that you gave to all of us in this world. And that love was expressed by sending your son Jesus Christ into the world whom we have now in our lives as Savior and Lord. We pray that as we continue to embrace this kind of love that we have 
May this kind of love also will be shown to others so that they will experience the greatest love of all, just like us. We ask for your Holy Spirit to guide each one of us, not only to understand, but to apply what we are supposed to learn today. Help us to know your will, know your perspective, and know your plans in our lives. For in Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. There are so many different definitions of love. Now, I want you to listen to what the children, how the children explain love. Here is Rebecca, age eight years old. She said, when my grandmother got arthritis, she couldn't bend over and paint her two nails anymore. So my grandfather does it for her all the time, even when his hands got arthritis too. That's love, said Rebecca. Billy, age four, he said, when someone loves you, the way they say your name is different. You just know what, that your name is safe in their mouth. Here is Chrissy, age six. Love is when you go out to eat and give somebody most of your friends' fries without making them give you any of theirs. That's amazing. Another one, Danny, age seven. Love is when my mommy makes coffee for my daddy and she takes a sip before giving it to him to make sure that the coffee tastes okay. Tommy, age six. Love is like a little old woman and a little old man who are still friends after they knew each other so well for many years. Last one. Jessica, age eight. You really don't say I love you unless you mean it. But if you mean it, you should say, I love you a lot. People forget. Now, how about you? How do you define love? Can you just like instantly say something about love? Now, this is how God defines love to each one of us. God loves the world in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God expressed his love to all of us by sending his one and only son into the world. And no truth in the Bible comes home to us when we talk about love with such a force and with such power and with such tenderness as the love of God through the Lord Jesus Christ. Because this love was offered to us without any expectations of return. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Even though there was but, even though there was a condition, but when God offers the Lord Jesus Christ to all of us, he doesn't expect us to love him in return. He wants us to accept his love. Here is what the prophet Jeremiah wrote something about the love of God. In Jeremiah 31, 3, it says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. John the apostle, concerning our loves, our Lord's love for his disciples, he said, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, then he said, Having loved his own, which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. Everlasting love. In John 13, 1. The Apostle Paul wrote in Ephesians, concerning Christ's love for us, 
In Ephesians 5, 2, he says, And walk in the way of love just as Christ loved us and gave himself for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. What an amazing love is that. God did not only show us love, but he himself is love. And all love starts within him and ends in him. Jesus Christ came to reveal the Father. When in John 1, 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That's because of His love. He came into this world because He loves us personally, individually, and specially. God's love for me. God's or Christ's love for me. The Holy Spirit's love for me opens the way for me to love God and love Him everyone else. A songwriter expressed his own version of how he experienced the greatest love of all. In his favorite hymn, he said, I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how he could love me, a sinner, condemned, unclean. And then the chorus says, how marvelous how wonderful and my song will ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. This love from the Lord Jesus Christ is for all people. This love from the Lord Jesus Christ is for all races. This love from the Lord Jesus Christ is for all nations all over the land. As John 3.16 expresses, someone has said, if all the Bible will be destroyed except John 3.16, anyone, anybody, anywhere could be saved by just believing what God said to all of us. There is no question about it. No question at all. When we talk about Christ's love, our Christ or our love for each other is nothing. Christ's love for all of us is the greatest love of all. God's love was overflowing with mercy. God's love is overflowing with care. God's love is overflowing with grace. And that's why when we respond to this love of God... Accept the Lord Jesus Christ as his offering, as the sacrifice for all of us. Joy will be overflowing in our lives. Now, let's look at the great love of Christ as revealed in his word. Why it is the greatest. Number one, the love of Christ, the love of Jesus Christ is the greatest because it is a powerful love. It is a powerful love. In verses 31 to 32. Listen to the word of God. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. He will not, will, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all thanks. I want you to look into the powerful love of God. Powerful love of God that actually can change a lot of people. Love sets our God apart from the other gods of every other religion. Other religion says... Strive, work hard. But our God says, love. Everything he made and everything he's doing, even up to this time, flows out from his love to all of us. When we see love in this world, when we see people caring for each other, 
when we see people praying for each other, when we see people encouraging one another, it's a reminder that we are made in the image of God, who is love. Love exists among us because God exists in the middle of us. Because God is a part of all of us and that is God's and that is part of God's character when we love each other. Seeing God as a loving father is an easy way to comprehend his love for us. Because a father will do anything for his children. God doesn't just love us. Love is not just what God does. It is who He is. It is one thing to be loving. But it is infinitely more significant for God's character to be the source of all love. And this is what He did to all of us through the Lord Jesus Christ. So the reason why we can say the love of the Lord Jesus Christ is powerful because that transforms our minds in accepting that our love is nothing compared to the love of God. But our love can be more effective if we will go ahead and take that love of God and switch into how God wants us to love one another. Our minds was transformed. Our minds were changed from this world to becoming God's children. It is, a like, it is like a day and night transformation. And so many people can't believe it. But this transformation can only happen if God is with us and we all allow Him to control our way of life. Transformation cannot happen to anyone unless we allow God to transform us. The work of the Holy Spirit in us is to transform us from becoming self-centered to God-centered. Or from being self-centered to becoming God-centered. To becoming people, to, to be from people of this world to becoming people of the heavenly beings. The power of that work of transformation is the love of God shown to each one of us because God's love has been poured into our hearts when we receive the Holy Spirit. And mind you, my friends, people will not understand that. People will not understand when we say the truth will set you free. When we receive the Lord Jesus Christ in our hearts and respond to the Lord Jesus Christ's love for each one of us, the Lord Jesus Christ will make the transformation through the Holy Spirit. And the scripture shows us that people who have been growing in love in the Lord Jesus Christ will continue to reveal the will of the Lord Jesus Christ in this, in this world to others. Apostle Paul exhorts each one of us to continue to grow in the knowledge and grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And that this growth was not because of any doctrine of man. Any doctrine from man. Any man-made rules. But they were taught by God through His Word to love one another. It was not anything from this world that could achieve this status the status of life, but only by the transforming power of God's love. And they were being changed into the image of the Father. They were learning to love one another because God's love empowers them to do so. They were showing the transformation power of God first in their lives and into all the world, to their neighbors, to their community, to their brothers and sisters, to their families, and even to their co-workers. God's love is so great that it is so powerful in our lives. Number two, 
The love of the Lord Jesus Christ is the greatest because it is a satisfying love. It is a satisfying love. Verses 35 to 36. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered every day. To be slaughtered. Now, brothers and sisters in the Lord, my friends, when we talk about satisfying the needs of each one of us, to satisfy the needs of each one of us is to have the Lord Jesus Christ love for us. Christ is enough and can satisfy us fully in our greatest need. Of that relationship with the Lord. Or we got a father. When we yearn for something more than Christ. We are not trusting him to meet our needs. Or to be fully content. And be satisfied with him. In Christ. We have all in all. In Christ. We have the promises. In Christ. We have the guidance. In Christ. We know that he promised never to leave us or forsake us in Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5. In Christ, God give us good gifts as his children in Matthew chapter 7, 11. And to work all things out of the good for those who love him in Romans 8, 28. He sees each one of us as valuable, important in Matthew chapter 10 verse 31. We were purchased with his precious blood in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 23. And we have been given the gift of eternal life in Romans 6, 23 and John 3, 16. Now, brothers and sisters in the Lord, what else? My friends, what else do we need that Jesus Christ cannot meet? What else do we need in this world that, cannot, that Jesus, our God, cannot provide? A good example for this one, and we've studied this in our Bible study, in our prayer meeting. When Jesus spoke, spoke with the Samaritan woman at the well in Samaria, he contrasted the water that she was collecting from the well, Jacob's well, with the living water that only the Lord Jesus Christ can give. Why water? Water is so essential in our life. Water is so essential in the lives of those people in Samaria. But the living water that Jesus offers because of love is eternal. And that's what Jesus Christ explained. You may drink from this water... But tomorrow you will be thirsty. But if you will have the living water, you will never be thirsty again. Our human life is temporary. Everything in this world is temporary. Only what Jesus gave us is eternal. All of the needs and wants will eventually pass away. But God's word and God's promises through the Lord Jesus Christ will never pass away. Jesus also said that he is the bread of life. Water and bread are so important. Bread is a staple food. I remember when we were in Bethlehem a few days back, the word Bethlehem actually means the house of bread. In Hebrew, it's called the house of meat. Both are important staples in the lives of many people. Yet Jesus is offering something more than physical bread. He's offering himself. He surpasses the physical needs and wants that we have. Spiritual. Spiritual that are imperishable. Spiritual that are eternal. And this is the truth. When Jesus Christ came into this world, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. 
The Apostle John, at the end of his first doxology in Revelation chapter 1, verses 5 to 6, we can find these words. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. John the Apostles knew that Jesus Christ loved him. And some people call him John the Beloved. And it made his heart sing. It made his heart shout praises. It satisfies his needs in this world because of the Lord Jesus Christ. Then later on, Apostle Paul said in Romans chapter 8, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present or the future, nor any powers, neither height or depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. That is the ultimate purpose of God. Because God loves us so much. And Apostle Paul said, nothing, I mean nothing, can separate us from God's love. When I say nothing, means no person, no situations, no enemy like Satan can separate us from God's love. He loves us yesterday, he loved us today, and he will love us tomorrow. For God never changed. He loves us while we are alive. He will continue to love us when we die. He will still love us. And he is still offering this kind of love to anyone, to all of us, to all the people in the world. Reason why his love triumphs over everything in this world that even death cannot and will not be able to separate us from the love of Christ. God's love is still available for each one who will respond by accepting his love through the Lord Jesus Christ and allowing Jesus Christ to come into their hearts in response to the love of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, Jesus Christ. If you have not received the Lord Jesus Christ yet into your heart, you have not experienced the real love. You have not experienced the true love that God wants you to receive. Let me close with this. This love was sealed when the Lord Jesus Christ allowed his life, allowed his body, allowed his blood to be nailed on the cross. That gives us victory. From the beginning to the end, from the womb to the tomb, the Lord Jesus Christ was victorious. And no one can erase that in the history of mankind. That Jesus Christ died for us. The love of Jesus Christ is the greatest thing that we all can experience. The greatest thing that can happen to us. If we will just respond. Men, women, boys and girls. Christ's offer is still available. As children sings, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. This is the message of God for each one of us. What is your response of this greatest love of all? How do you accept that you need the expression of God? The expression of God's love through the Lord Jesus Christ. Allow him to come into your heart. Give him the chance to transform you to becoming like Christ. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your word for each one of us. Thank you for that greater love, greatest love of all. That you have shown us through your son, Jesus Christ. I pray, Father, that as we continue to allow you to work in the lives of those who have not received him yet, may the Holy Spirit lead them to the transformation that they want to experience. Bless us now. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, 
May the grace of God, the love of the Lord Jesus Christ, blessings, guidance, and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be upon each one of us now and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you all.